a very good morning to you wherever you're watching Zoe Breakfast Show. This is Zoe Television, Inspiring Lives. And my name is Michael Chosen. I want to believe you've had a good night. And it's a beautiful morning, even a time of praise and worship throughout the night and even this morning. Thank you for being part and parcel of Zoe Breakfast every morning, 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. And right now, remember, this conversation is live on Facebook, Zoe TV. On YouTube, Zoe TV. Yes, our numbers are on your screen. Talk to us, SMS, call us. On 0700075555 today is Tuesday. And every Tuesday right here on Zoe Breakfast Show, it's all about youth in business and youth in leadership. We are about to give you a program that is going to be a great blessing to you and to your family. Remember the topic of discussion and coming up in a short while. We'll update you in regard to the news that have made headlines this morning on Zoe News Today. And later on, we are going to have a live conversation with a business and a financial expert. Indeed, James Kihara will be here right now uh, in the building and we are going to have a great discussion on personal finance management. You don't want to miss that live discussion coming on later on, but let's begin with a word of prayer as we commit the day into the hands of God. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you that we are alive today to witness your favor and your mercies. Forgive us, God, where we have sinned against you. May you pardon us and remember us, O oh God. May you remember our families this morning, O oh God. The Bible says that you remembered Rachel. You listened to her prayer and you opened her womb. And this morning, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you may remember us in our low estate. You may remember every family. Remember everyone that is believing God for their business, for their marriages, for their healing. Remember us, O oh God. May you listen to our prayer and God Almighty open the door that need to open. Shut the door that need to be shut. Oh God Almighty, open the opportunities that your people need to walk into today. Bless us today with your favor and your mercy. No evil shall come to us or near our loved ones or even in our nation. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' mighty name, I want to believe you're saying amen. It's a good morning. Good morning to you wherever you are. This is Zoe Breakfast Show. And indeed, we're going to be having news in a short while. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with Zoe News Today. Welcome to Zoe News Today. Right now we want to update you in regard to what is happening in and around the world. We begin with the headlines this morning. In the headlines today on Zoe News, we are looking at that story. Rita Waeni buried in a low-key ceremony. Fix the problems in our education system. This is an article that has been written right there on your daily nation. And finally, also city residents abandoned Muradi area for hours over gas leakage fear. Those and others are going to be making part and parcel of the news that we are updating you this morning. We are also going to update you in regard to the Africa Cup of Nations and the English Premier League. But let's go back to our first news this morning and see what it in details. Right there on your screen, you can see our first story. Rita Waeni has been buried in a low-key ceremony. you find this one on your daily nation. Rita Waeni, the 23-year-old woman killed in Roy Sambo, Nairobi, three weeks ago, has been buried at Mukimwani village in Maku Eni. It was a low-key activity because only the coast leftists were invited. Armed police officers stationed outside the gate homestead kept shocked believer, be, uh, villagers at bay. The organizers of the funeral had made it clear that only close relatives would be allowed into the homestead where the burial took place. An administrator who attended the funeral told the nation in confidence, yet that did not still deter locals from miling around the home. Indeed, that angel has gone to rest. We want to really pass our condolences to the family and wish them grace and strength even in this difficult time as they come into terms with the demise of their daughter, Rita Waeni, who was brutally murdered a few weeks ago. Yes, we want to also look also on the Daily Nation. 
still on the Daily Nation. We are talking about fix the problems in our education system. It's an article that you find on the Daily Nation in regard to our education system. And according to this particular story, we are told, as educational systems worldwide grapple, we the need for innovation and relevance in the 21st century. The competency-based curriculum that is CBC has emerged as a beacon of change. Yet behind its progressive facade lies a myriad of challenges and criticisms that demand our attention. As we reflect on the state of the education in Kenya, particularly the implementation of the CBC, it becomes evident that the promises made by the Kenya Kwanzaa administration remain unfulfilled. The lack of progress and the persistent challenges facing CBC implementation demands urgent attention and decisive action from President William Ruto. The function of leadership is to produce more leaders, not more followers. Right there on that particular news story, it's about fixing the education problems in the society today. Even as we continue moving forward toward the CPC implementation, it is time for the government, and that is the Kenya Kwanzaa administration, to continue fulfilling the promises of ensuring that indeed the education right here in Kenya becomes a great, great platform for our children to be able to settle in life and even in future. And uh, I don't know what is your comment in regard to CBC. What is your comment this morning? Talk to us. SMS us, WhatsApp us on 0700 We want to hear from you how we can also be able to fix the education challenges today around the, you know, the competency-based curriculum that is CBC. And indeed, we want to pray that our government will continue fixing the problems that you know our children go through. We need more teachers in our schools. We need to ensure that they... Uh, there are facilities, enough facilities for our children to be able to study and even to be able to move forward uh, well in that aspect of education. Let's go now and check out on the Standard newspaper. In the Standard newspaper this morning, there's a, a news right there on your screen. City residents abandon Muradi area for hours of a gas leakage fear. Remember a few days ago, there was a uh, a gas explosion right there in Embakasi. And right now, city residents have abandoned Muradi area for hours of a gas leakage fair. It is a story you find on the standard newspaper by the standard team. The paper reads, Panic grief residents of Muradi in Embakasi following a suspected gas leak in the wake of last Friday's blast that has so far left six people dead and more than 300 people injured. Life returned to more normalcy later in the day after security agents conducted investigations following reports that there was an underground tank that was leaking but found none. The residents recounted waking up to a strong smell of liquefied petroleum gas that is LPG. Can you remember that particular story? It was sad how there was a blast and we are told that up to now six people have been left dead and 300 people have been injured so far. According to this particular story, residents at some point, they abandoned that particular area, that is Muradi area, for hours of a gas leakage fear, but later on it was confirmed that there was none. That is a news that you find on the Standard newspaper. I want to take you again also still on the Standard newspaper. We have a story right there on your screen. Regional kinship contest cause unnecessary divisions in communities. According to this story, it is a story by Alexander Chagema. And Alexander Chagema writes a story in regard to what is happening around the regions and you know what is shaping up towards becoming a political battle now and even in the times to come. And according to this story, a few areas have been highlighted, including Central Kenya, where we see right there on the your, your screen, you can see President William Ruto together with the, the Deputy President Rikadi Gachagua. On this other side, you can see Kiharu, Member of Parliament, Tindi Nyoro. And according to the central politics that have been going on, some people have been saying, you know, in 2032, there's need for a shift so that uh, President William Ruto can run together with Dindi Nyoro. And there are some of them uh, are saying that indeed uh, Rigati Gashoga will not be able to be able to fit in at this particular time in 2032. Those are some of the battles that have been highlighted in this particular paper. And I can just read a few things that have been said. Political spots have hit and now threaten to split central Kenya amplify two things the unifying power that the kenyatta family had on the region and possible schemes to polarize and weaken a region that has given kenya three of its five presidents so far a lot has been said in regard to the ambitions of so many that want to be able to take over some of this region and to become a voice in that particular region 
There are people that believe indeed that Ricardo Gachagua is the person to be the spokesperson for the central region. Others are beginning to believe that uh, Dini Nyoro and, uh, will be able to take that part. And indeed, we are looking at that particular story. You can be able to read it in full on the standard newspaper. Yes, indeed, we want to check out and see what is happening on the People's Daily. On the People's Daily this morning, a news right there on your screen. We are talking about ESCC seeking additional 700 million Kenya shillings on budgetary allocation. It is a news that you find on the People's Daily by Francis Morley. The paper reads the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, that is ESCC, is seeking an additional 700 million Kenya shillings in budgetary allocation to support its operations. Speaking during a joint forum between ESCC and the National Assembly's Committee on Justice and Legal Affairs in Naivasha, ESCC CEO Tony Mbaran said that the institutional capacity of ESCC in terms of budgetary allocation and human resource needs to be urgently enhanced. We find that news on your people daily. Grab yourself a copy of the People's Daily this morning. You can be able to get more details in regard to that. Still on the People's Daily this morning, Yes, that indeed a story in regard to Inside Ruto's agenda in state visit to Japan. It is an insert to find on the People's Daily by Francis Morley. President William Ruto is set to depart the country on Monday night for a state visit to Japan. The visit announced by State House spokesperson Hussein Mohammed marks the first visit state by a Kenyan head of state since President Mwaiki Bakis 20 years ago. And indeed, according to Mohammed, the visit follows Prime Minister Fumio Kushida's state visit to Kenya in May 2023 and celebrates 60 years of diplomatic relationships between Kenya and Japan. It is an easy to find right there in regard to what Ruto will be looking forward to as he goes to his state visit to Japan. Ruto will engage in bilateral talks with Prime Minister Kushida with a focus on economic cooperation in key sectors such as health, ICT, infrastructure, energy, and financial services. Let's take you now to the world of business and see what is happening in the world of business right there on the screen. The news that we have highlighted by Brian Ambani on the Business Daily. It's all about power prices may go down. Ken Jen says citing filled up dams. This is a good news for all of us right now because the bills have been quite going up on high. But according to this story, we are told prices may come down. Kenjin says citing filled up dam. The story says Kenjin has reported a bigger generation of cheaper hydropower on filled up drums, promising lower electricity bills for consumers. Kenjin Managing Director Peter Jenga said that dams in the Seven Fork scheme have filled to the highest level in recent times. This has led to a significant increase in the output of hydropower, which is the cheapest source of electricity in Kenya, said the farm. That is a good news. We hope that it's going to happen. And uh, we are looking forward to that, you know, cheaper prices, prices going down, electricity prices going down because according to Kenjin, there has been a lot of dams that are already full and filled up. Let's check out and see what is happening in the world of sports. Let's update you now in regard to sports. Africa's Sprint King shatters records in Steelers season's opener. Right there you can see, indeed, our very own. It is an issue find on the People's Sport by Dennis Mabuka. And as you can see right there, Africa's fastest man, Ferdinand Omanyala. That is, you know, our king right here in Kenya, Ferdinand Omanyala. And according to this story, Africa's fastest man, Ferdinand Omanyala, launched the new year on a remarkable note by shattering a record in his first race of the season at the elite Indo truck meeting in Miramas, France on Friday. The 100-meter record holder secured the top spot in the men's 60 meters establishing a new meeting record in the dash. He dominated the semi-final, crossing the finish line in six seconds. You know, six seconds and uh, 62 seconds. You know, it was such a such a big run. It was such a big run for Paninan Omanyala, our very own right here in Kenya. In the final, Omanyala clocked an impressive 6.52 seconds, cleaning, clinching victory and breaking the national record previously set at 6.54 in the previous year at the meeting how to difference past the Lakais in front. Did the Commonwealth Games champion not only lower the earlier meet record of 6.57 seconds, but also came close to the challenging the current world lead set at 6.48 seconds. Go, go, our very own Ferdinand Omanyala. Africa's sprint king shatters records 
in Steelers season opener. The new year has started so well for Ferdinand Omanyala. We want to wish him all the best together with all our athletes that continue to make our nation Kenya proud. Still on the, on the sports, let's update in regard to what is happening. We are now in the semi-finals, the semi-finals of the Africa Cup of Nations. And according to this particular story, you can see right there on your screen, the Africa Cup of Nations. We are looking now at the semi-finals. And according to this semi-finals, I don't know if you can be able to capture the exact uh, semi-finals that are going to be happening. Nigeria is in the semi-finals. South Africa is in the semi-finals. DRC Congo is in the semi-finals. The Ivory Coast, Ivory Coast, you know, they are the host of this uh, Africa Cup of Nations 2024. And we are looking forward to celebrate together with them. We hope that they could be able to win. <laughs> they could be able to win this cup at your own home, hometown. And therefore, you want to watch out and be able to see the matches that are going to be happening tomorrow. That's the semi-finals for the Africa Cup of Nations. Nigeria are going to be battling out with South Africa. Then Ivory Coast are going to be battling out with DRC Congo. That is tomorrow. The semi-finals are happening. We are going all the way to the finals on Sunday. Looking forward to see who is going to win this particular time. Senegal are out. The defending champions are out. Therefore, um, for right now, I'm... Um, I'm in for Nigeria. My team is Nigeria. What, which is your team? My team is Nigeria. I'm looking forward to seeing that Nigeria can be able to take this cup this time around. And therefore, tomorrow, South Africans, you're going South African. I'm, uh, I'm not in your side this morning, but I'm, <laughs> I'm behind Nigeria, hoping they can be able to beat South Africa. They go to the final. And I'm hoping that uh, they can be able to, you know, Ivory Coast will be beaten by DRC Congo. So it becomes a final between Nigeria and DRC Congo, and Nigeria takes it. That's my prediction. What's your prediction? Also on the Premier League this morning, we want to update you the Premier League standings. You know, we are almost moving forward uh, and you can see right there, Liverpool FC is on the top of the table. Liverpool is on the top of the table with 51 points, followed by Man City. Man City is at 49 points. Arsenal, that's my team, Arsenal. And they did us so much proud this weekend because of beating Liverpool 3-1. Arsenal are that with 49 points. We hope they can be able to do something this particular time and take the cup. Uh, yes, the, every, anything is possible. <laughs> then Aston Villa is number four uh, with 46 points. And Tottenham, they are number five with 44 points in the English Premier League. I cannot see Manchester United here in the number one to number five. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're doing well, Manchester United fans. Thank you so much for joining us this morning on Joy News Today. It has been great. Talk to us. SMS and let us know where you're watching us from in a short while. We'll be back with the topic of discussion. My name is Michael Chosen. Stay tuned. Dear Mimi, today is your wedding day. How the days fly. 
I still remember the day I held you for the first time. Your button nose, your deep black eyes, that grip. I wanted you to hold on forever. You were so new, pure, undefiled. You were mine to protect, to shield from the stains and scars this world inflicts on us all. I'd like to think I won most of those battles. I lost some too. I watched you grow. First words, first steps, first heartbreaks, first tears. You blossomed into a warrior. And today I couldn't be more proud of who you become. Mimi, by the time you read this, I won't be around. This disease will take me soon. You will bury me, and it kills me to think that I won't be there to wipe away those tears. I won't be there to hold you, to whisper into your ears, it'll be okay. I wish with all my heart it wasn't this way, but it is. Today, I know you will feel my absence. It will weigh heavy on your heart. But I want you to know that you are not alone.
Mamba. Welcome back to Zoe Breakfast Show. Indeed, this is your number one Christian station, Zoe TV. And right now you're watching Zoe Breakfast Show. I want to believe you're well. And remember, this conversation is live on Facebook, Zoe TV. On YouTube, Zoe TV. Your numbers are on your screen, 0700 Talk to us even while the conversation goes on. We want to remind you our question of the day today. Our question of the day this morning, we want you to talk to us. SMS us, WhatsApp us. This is where you talk to us. You talk to Zoe TV. You talk to Michael Chosen. We'll be so glad to hear from you. And our question is very simple. We are asking, who is the president of Rwanda? And what is the capital city of Rwanda? Those are the two. They are combined in one. We want to know who is the president of Rwanda? And what is the capital city of Rwanda? Talk to us this morning. We'll be so glad to hear from you today, even as we continue with this live conversation on Zoe Breakfast Show. We also want to remind you in a short while we are going to be having a live conversation with a financial expert. Right there on the screen you can see our guest. Our guest is already in the studio. And we are about to have a deep conversation, a candid conversation. We have had this guest before and it was quite a great, great blessing to us. And we are about to have this uh, guest again, our business adversary consultant and a financial literacy expert, indeed Mr. James Kihara himself is right here in the studio we're going to talk about personal finance management part two how you can be able to deal with the issues of debt and how you can be able to save we are talking about saving and also how you can be able to solve the issues of debt you don't want to miss that live conversation coming in a short while but right now we want to look at the verse of the day every morning we begin with the scripture of the day and our verse of the day this morning comes from psalm 27 verse 13 to 14 Psalm 27, verse 13 to 14, we look at that particular scripture. It is our guiding verse today. Every morning we wake up with a scripture. And the Bible says, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. David is saying, I will have fainted. I will have quit. I will have thrown in the towel. But the reason why I did not throw in the towel, I did not give up. I did not quit on my life, on my marriage, on my ministry. On my dream, he says, I, I believed that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That is why our topic of discussion this morning is waiting for God's time. We are talking about waiting for God's time. That is our topic of conversation, our topic of discussion this morning, our topic of inspiration. We are looking at waiting, waiting on God's time. Have you ever been in a place where you had to wait? Have you ever gone to, uh, to see somebody in a particular office and you are put in a waiting room and you had to wait? Have you ever been in a place of waiting? Maybe some of you are waiting right now for a job. You're waiting for a call. Maybe right now you're waiting for a baby. You're waiting to start a church, a ministry. You are waiting to go and start your college. All of us at one time or another, we are always in a place of waiting. Nobody ever succeeded without going through the stages of waiting, the phases of waiting. But I'm excited because David is saying, I will have given up, I will have lost in the towel, had I not believed that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. While you wait, it's important for you to wait until God comes. Have you ever gone to a place whereby you are waiting to see a particular person in a particular office, but time went by and you realize time is gone and you realize I cannot wait anymore and you left. And while you left, the office called your name and it's your time to come and enter. But you are not there. You are not available because you couldn't wait. This morning, I know there are many people that are in the waiting room. You're waiting for a job. There are so many people that are in the waiting room waiting for uh, their health to come back to normal. Waiting for your marriage, for your children, for your finances to be okay. When you begin to walk with God and know his time, you will wait on God. You will wait on him. When you begin to walk with God and know his time, that God will still come in his time, you will wait on God. And there are several things that will happen to you. Number one, you will trust him even when you can't trust him. When you cannot see God around your life and your family, you will still trust him. That is what Job says in Job 13:15. I've always given you this scripture. Job chapter number 13, verse 15 says something very powerful. It says that even though he slays me, yet will I trust him. Yeah, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Even so, I will defend my own ways before him. He's saying I cannot trust God, but I will still going to trust him. When you know God and you know his time, you will trust him even when you can't trust him. 
Number two, you will believe in God even in difficult times and seasons. Maybe right now you're going through a difficult time and season, but you will still be a believer. That out of this season, I will still going to come out a winner. I'm not a quitter. Winners never quit. And quitters never win. And therefore, you will believe in God even in difficult times and seasons. And number three, you will stay calm and at rest waiting on God to show up. You will stay calm. You will not panic. You will stay calm and at rest waiting on God to show up. I want to encourage somebody this morning and tell them that God will still show up. Maybe you're looking at your chronos time. That is the time and the calendar of man. But God knows that he will come in his time, the Kairos time of God. Stay calm and wait for God to show up. That is what the Bible says in Psalms 46 verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I'm God. And finally, you will stay thankful for what he has done already. God has done things in your life that right now are already a proof that he has come through for you before. And if he has come through for you before, even now, trust in him. Stay thankful for what he has done already. When you know that God will still come as you wait on him, stay thankful. You have seen him in the past. You called on his name in the past. He opened that door for you. He's still God. Even now in your valley, he's still God. When you are at the top, he's still God. When you are at the valley, he is still God. And therefore, there are things you will never do and you will never walk in when you know God's time. There are things you will never do. And, you know, there are things you will never do when you know God's time. Let me show you some of these things. There are things you will never do when you know God's time. As you wait on him, there are things that you will never do. Number one, you will never question God's timing for your deliverance. You never question God, you are late. God is never late. He comes on time. <laughs> he comes in his time. He's never, sometimes, uh, you know, God comes in his time. He knows the best time. So the things that you never do when you know God's time, number one, you never question God's timing for your deliverance. I'm waiting for God to heal me. I am believing God for healing. And therefore, I will wait on his time. Even if it doesn't happen today, I will wait. When you know God's time, you wait on him. It means that you never question God's timing for your deliverance, number one. Number two, you never doubt God's ability and faithfulness to his word. Right now, I'm speaking to people that have come to a place where you've begun to doubt God. You've begun to doubt what God said, told you and said to you. But when you know God's time, you never doubt God's ability and faithfulness to his word. God is a promise keeper. He says in Numbers 23, verse number 19, Take me to Numbers 23, verse number 19. It says something very powerful. Numbers 23, verse number 19. You never doubt God's ability and faithfulness to his word. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said and will he not do? Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? I like the passion that says that God is not a man that he should lie. Has he spoken and will he not do? Has he said it? will he not perform it? So when you know God's time, you never question God's time. You never doubt God's ability. You never panic. Number three, you never panic because it's a crisis. You never panic. When you know God's time, you never panic because it's a crisis. You enter rest and are at peace. You remember that story? One time Jesus was with the disciples and he was sleeping in the boat and there was a big storm. And even, be, you know, that big storm Jesus was sleeping in that big storm. This is how Jesus handles storms. He sleeps through them. <laughs> yeah. While the disciples were panicking and, you know, they went to wake him up and they told Jesus, by the way, don't you care that we perish? They were panicking. But when you know God's time, you never panic because you know, because it's a crisis. You never panic because it's a crisis. Crisis will come. Challenges will come. Storms will come. Like the storm that came when Jesus was with the disciples in the boat, but he was asleep. And he was not worried. He, did, he was not worried that he would sink. He was totally asleep because he knew he's the one in charge of everything. I want to tell you today, God knows even the storm you are in. God knows how to bring you out of that storm. And God knows how to make a way where there seems to be no way. We have already said there are people who are already in the middle of a storm. There are people that are coming out of a storm. And there are people that are about to enter into a storm. Never panic because it's a crisis. Believe God. Jesus woke up out of that sleep and he rebuked the wind and the Bible says it was calm. 
When you know God's time, you never panic because it's a crisis. You put your faith in God. You never give up on your faith. You hold on till the promise is fulfilled. Number four, you never give up on your faith. You hold on till the promise is fulfilled. There is a promise God has given to you. Hold on. There is a word God has given unto you. Hold on to that word. God is faithful to fulfill his word. And indeed, you never forget God. When you know God's time, you never forget God. Yeah, I'm telling you, the Bible says, It is he that gives you the power to make wealth. There is no amount of success or favor that will take you away from the love, from the love of God. When you know God's time, you never forget God. There are people this morning that have come to a place where they have forgotten God. They have, you know, the kingdom of God is no longer a priority. That is why church is no longer a priority. Having a spiritual mentor is no longer a priority. I want to tell you this morning that even as you trust and wait on God, you never forget God. Never forget God. Now that you have money, now that everything is working out, you never forget God. In fact, the Bible says, gives a warning that when you have gotten everything you have, you, God has given to you, never forget God. Because the moment you forget God, God will also forget you and forget your family. That was a warning that was given to the children of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter number 8. Therefore, number 5, we are saying you never forget God. You put God first. Whether you are at the top of the mountain or at the peak of your life, you put God first. Because you don't want God to remind you where he picked you. You don't want God to remind you where you are, where you are crying, where you are in debt, where things were not happening in your life, in your finances, in your marriage, and even in your health. You don't want to get to a place where God reminds you, I'm the one who picked you from there. I'm the one who made the way for you last year. Because the time God comes to remind you, you're already not with him. Remind God of his faithfulness yourself before he can remind you. Remind God, you have been faithful to me. I put my faith and my trust in you because I know you are a faithful God. And because you are a faithful God, you will accomplish that which concerns me. Yes, indeed, you are watching Zoe Breakfast Show. Thank you so much. We are waiting on God's time. I want to appreciate all of you that are joining us on Facebook, Zoe TV, on YouTube, Zoe TV. We'll be reading your feedback in a short while. But right now, we want to take a short break. We'll be back even as we wrap up the topic of discussion. In a short while, we are having a great sitting with a, a financial expert this morning, Mr. James Kihara. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with our topic of discussion. My name is Omar Rashley Varelliano and I work as chapter director ng Rasho Christi and Reasonable Faith. What I do is to help Christians know what they believe and why they believe it para maging ready sila to make a defense to anyone who asks them for the hope that they have. I would say na I really had a hard childhood. I experienced uh, physical, emotional, psychological abuse. Tapos sa family background kasi namin, we were nominal Christians. Ibig sabihin, we just profess Christ pero we don't really know Him. For example, we go to church pag Sunday, tapos pag uwi, parang hindi naman Christian kung paano kami mag-interact with one another. So yun yung environment kung saan ako lumaki. And I think nag-contribute to in siya why I became an atheist. Nung college days, uh, I became officially an atheist. Yung pagiging atheist ko nang closeted, so ibig sabihin, it, hindi ako aggressive and hindi ko siya pinagkakalat sa mga tao. Actually, akala pa nga ng iba kong classmates Christian ako kasi yung parang goody-goody. Pero hindi talaga ako believer. And yung main reason ko why I am an atheist is the problem of evil. So, hindi ko ma-reconcile na si God is all-loving and He is all-powerful. Kasi if all-powerful siya, kaya niya makuha lagi ang gusto niya. And if loving siya, dapat hindi tayo magsasuffer and may suffering. And dahil sa na-experience ko sa family growing up and yung mga nakikita ko sa news, convinced ako na walang God at least. And uh, later on sa life ko nung college, bigla na lang naging petics. May subject kami na anatomy and physiology. Yung human body ay sobrang systematic. 
and dahil doon, hindi ko siya ma-reconcile na paano siya magiging product ng isang blind and mindless process. Pero hindi ako nag-believe noon. Fun fact lang siya sa akin. Yung nag-introduce sa akin ng Christianity is a senior of mine sa nursing school. Ang name niya is si Kuya Ariel Albuero. Basically, what he did is after nung fellowship sa school, he took me aside and talked to me. Kinilala niya ako. Basically, habang nag-share siya, yung feeling ko nun mind-blown talaga ako kasi even though I always heard the gospel growing up, parang hindi ko siya nagigit. So parang dun ko lang talaga siya naiintindihan. When he asked me, do you want to believe in Jesus? Nag, nag-trust talaga ako agad. So since then, I think parang I really wanted to know how to be a Christian. So I just absorbed everything na pwede ko malaman about God. Welcome back, welcome back to Zoe Breakfast Show. Today is Tuesday and every Tuesday right here on Zoe Breakfast Show. It's all about youth in business and youth in leadership. We are about to have a great life conversation with a financial literacy expert. That is Mr. James Kihara. Right there on the screen, you can see our guest who is already in the studio. We are talking to a business advisory consultant and a financial literacy expert. That is Mr. James Kihara. And indeed, you want to behave. And as we talk about personal finance management part two, we're talking about investing. We're talking about debt handling. It's going to be a great conversation. You want to be right here as we're about to cross over to that particular discussion. I want to appreciate all of you that are joining us right now on Zoe Breakfast Show. Thank you so much, Loxan Womax. Amen. Lord, help me to be thankful in my waiting. Yes, indeed. Even in your season of waiting, wait on God. I want to appreciate all of you. Thank you, Jeff Mukenya, for being part of the Pastor of Zoe Breakfast Show this morning. It is great to always be connected to you this morning. As we wrap up our topic of discussion this morning, I want to encourage us that we need to wait on God. For they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. The Bible says they will mount up with wings as an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. What do you do while you wait for God's time? That's the question I want us to answer and then we'll wrap it up. What do you do while you wait for God's time? Because everybody is in a place of waiting. So what do you do while you wait for God's timing? Three things. What do you do while you wait for God's timing? What do you do while you're waiting for that promotion, for that visa, for you to be totally well? What do you do while you're in a place of waiting to get married, to open a business? What do you do? What is the kind of an environment that you need to cultivate even as you wait on God? Because the Bible says in Isaiah 40, 31, Isaiah 40, 31, you know the scripture very well, that they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Right there on your scripture, on the screen. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So what do you do while you're waiting for God? Number one, have a positive attitude. Have a positive attitude. Have a positive attitude. Begin the day with a positive attitude. Jesus gave thanks. Can you imagine Lazarus, Lazarus was dead? Everybody was crying. Everybody was weeping. Even Jesus at some point, he wept. The shortest verse in the Bible, John eleven thirty five. 35, Jesus wept. But by the time he went to the grave of Lazarus, and you know, he was telling Martha and Mary, take away the stone, and they were telling Jesus, it's, it's you know, time bad. You're already late. He's thinking. The Bible says Jesus standing outside the grave, he gave thanks. And he looked up to heaven and he said, Father, I thank you that you always hear me. In the midst of everybody that was crying and weeping, Jesus could still give thanks. And you know what happened? He finally caught Lazarus out of the grave and he came out of that grave. Have a positive attitude. There's a lot of negativity today. Don't stay around negative people. Stay around positive people. Have a positive attitude while you wait. 
Have a positive attitude. Very important. Number two, stay in worship and thanksgiving. You remain thankful, giving praise and glory to God. Number two, stay thankful and stay in worship and thanksgiving. The God who has been with you at the top of the mountain, he's still the God with you right now in the valley. It doesn't mean that you stop worshiping him because you're going through a tough season. Remember we say that indeed, never forget the word yet. We talked about it yesterday. Never forget the word yet. I'm going through a crisis yet. I will come out. I don't have a job yet. I will get a job. I don't have a baby yet. I will get a baby. So stay in worship and thanksgiving. And finally, keep declaring my God will come in his time. Keep saying it. The power of life and death is in the tongue. Keep saying, keep saying, keep talking about where you're going. While you're waiting on God, finally, number three, keep declaring, my God will come in his time. In his time, he's going to do everything. He's going to perfect everything. And your God will come in his time. Are you there? You're not born again. You don't have a relationship with God. I want to introduce you to Jesus. Open your mouth and say after me, dear Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I need salvation. Come into my heart and save me. In Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer, I want you to know now you're born again from today. You are a transformed person. You have begun your journey of transformation. And the Lord is about to take you places you have never imagined before. You will go to the top while you wait on God. Because I have never seen a man that got disappointed waiting on God. Wait on God and indeed God is going to bless you and to minister to you. Remember our question of the day right there on your screen. A very simple question. We are asking who was the president? Who is the president of Rwanda right now? And what is its capital? We are talking, we are going Rwanda. I love Rwanda. Rwanda is a beautiful nation. It's a beautiful country. I love even the musicians. I've been listening to Israel Mbonyi. I just love Israel Mbonyi songs right there from Rwanda. And therefore, we are asking the question, who is the president of Rwanda and what is his capital? Talk to us this morning. It's a message. What's up? Us? We'll be so glad to hear from you. In a short while, we'll be back with our guest this morning. Stay tuned. You're watching Zoe Breakfast Show. I'm Michael Chosen. came, the world would feel right and safe. Together, you could face anything. God says, love one another as I have loved you. But what if it's not how we imagined? As humans, we are not perfect, and relationships can change. Maybe the trust has been broken, or you find distance between you. Has jealousy and anger overtaken it? Or maybe the unimaginable? You are not alone. Jesus says, Abide in my love, that my joy may be in you. He cares for you and loves you. Let him show you your worth. Sharing the gospel in your everyday life can sometimes be a struggle. So today we're going to go through three points to help you keep prayer priority in your life to be able to help you in those situations. Mm -hmm. 
If you enjoy videos like this, please don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe because we talk about things just like this every single week. Number one is going to be start your day in God's presence. That can look different for everybody. Um, it definitely doesn't look the same for any two people. <laughs> and so how you start your day is different from your best friend who's also a Christ follower. Don't freak out. Because um, this can definitely look like worshiping in the morning or it can be reading the word. Your relationship with God is not going to look the same as your best friend. Number two is going to be pray for whoever God puts on your heart. That can be <laughs> totally different. Again, it can be someone that while you're already praying and thanking God for things and just spending time in his presence, it can be someone that God puts on your heart in that moment. Or it can be someone that previously in the week has reached out to you asking for prayer or a month ago someone was put on your heart and you reached out to them and they said yeah I would love prayer for this. Praying for people helps you get your eyes off of the me and onto Christ's heart for those people and so starting your day like that is always just incredible. I'm just getting to be able to intercede for people. Number three is gonna be pray throughout the day. <laughs> That's gonna sound a little crazy. I want to explain this a little bit how it's not about being on your hands and knees and just praying that way throughout your day, it, it's it's like acknowledging Christ throughout your entire day. Having conversations with him while you're at work or if you're in a stressful situation or if you had something amazing happen, you're like, oh, thank God, that, that's amazing. And so it can be anything. For me, I have a lot of times when I go to the grocery store, this is gonna sound kind of stupid. It is something that, that God helps me with. I'll go to the grocery store, I'll forget every single thing that I actually went there to get and I buy everything else. And so I'll pray and I'll be like, Holy Spirit, please remind me of that thing that I actually really needed. I ended up coming and getting everything that I didn't need. And then I'll, I'll remember what it is. So I'll get to go and grab that. And there you go. If you struggle with holding yourself accountable to acknowledging Christ throughout your day, set a reminder on your phone. We would love for you to let us know down in the comment section down below how you hold yourself accountable and how you make prayer a priority in your life. You always imagined when love came, the world would feel right and safe. Together, you could face anything. God says, love one another as I have loved you. But what if it's not how we imagined? As humans, we are not perfect and relationships can change. Maybe the trust has been broken or you find distance between you has jealousy and anger overtaken? Or maybe the unimaginable? You are not alone. Jesus says, abide in my love that my joy may be in you. He cares for you and loves you. Let him show you your worth. Where am I? Am I alone? <laughs> oh no, you're not alone! Hi! Hello, newbie! Newbie? So, straight to the point, that shaggy one, he stole us from a sushi bar! He's taking us to the canning factory! Canning factory? The factory is where we die and get stuck in the can! <laughs> it's not good! We wanna go back to the sushi bar! Are you with us? Why the sushi bar? Come on! All the best fish are there! And we still have a chance to escape before the shaggy one smothers us in sauce! Uh... Who is this? Don't listen to them, son. The driver doesn't want to kill us. He saves us. Yeah, sure! Don't interrupt me. <clears throat> <clears throat> Please. Just because you're from the fancy fresh fish store doesn't make you the expert. Don't trust them, son. The driver won't hurt you. Sounds and frogs! It's the sushi bar! This is our last chance. We need to get out! Newbie, are you with us? I... I don't know. Jump! It's every fish for themselves! No! Uh, 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 uh,
Well, the catfish was right. The driver did not wish the fish any harm. He released them into the sea. This is a story about Jesus and us as people. In the midst of different opinions, we don't always know which choice is right. And very often, we choose the wrong one. See, we're created by God. And just like the driver, he has a great plan for each of us. But the green fish, yeah, they continued to think that the driver was bad because he didn't take them to the sushi bar. Go figure. Perhaps today you are looking at the ruins of your life and wondering how you've messed up so badly. Or maybe life is great and you have achieved everything you've ever dreamed of, but you still feel empty. Here's why. There is a God-shaped hole in all of us and filling it with money, with achievements or even relationships simply doesn't work. At some point, we all need to give our lives to God. The good news is that you can do this right now. You can invite Jesus into your life. Romans 10 verse 9 in the Bible says, If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So if you'd like to invite Jesus into your life, pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for loving me that you died on the cross for me. I am sorry for living life my own way and from this day forward I want to live for you. Now if you've made that prayer or have any questions, feel free to contact us. We would love to talk through this with you. Let me start sharing my story by asking you a question. Two questions. What's your story? Who are you? I think these questions are the most basic, it's the most toughest to answer, because your answer to these questions is basically, your, it shows what you choose to hold on to, what memory, which moment, which experience that you let define you. It took me a while before I could answer that question to myself. A lot of struggles, a lot of ups and downs. I asked, do I define myself by what I do? Do I define myself by what I believe in? Do I define myself by what I studied, what happens to me? And all of these things are labels that the world puts on me and it left me confused. It's not constant and I need something stable in my life. It was after a lot of ups and downs, as I said, that I finally realized that I cannot put my identity on what, but on who. And so today I can confidently say that I am the daughter of God. So I grew up in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, with three brothers, two older and one younger. And we had an amazing childhood. It was really, really fun. But it wasn't that easy. Um, when I was two years old, um, we lost my dad. So my oldest brother was five, and my, our youngest brother was four months old. So that left my mom to raise us alone. She was the strongest person that I knew, the most devoted Christian. She taught us every single day that you're not just born. You know, she said when she looks at us, she sees generations. Because she knew that we would be instruments of God. And she told us to always keep our eyes on him. That even though she was there, she wasn't the one who sustained us. That it was him who always provided. And then you can imagine that 10 years later, exactly 10 years later, when I was 12, she also went to be with the Lord. Our oldest brother was 15, and life presented us with so many questions that we couldn't answer. We were just too young, and we were confused. You know, we didn't know what to do next. We didn't know, you know what the future held for us anymore. And above all, the question that was ringing through my head every single day and every single night was why? Why, God? I mean, we're good people. Why did this happen? Why in this way? Why now? It took weeks. I asked, why, 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 God? And of course, he never answers your whys. God never explains himself. And then I realized he doesn't have to. He is a sovereign God. And when I realized that, I made a deal with God. And I told him that I would acknowledge that he was still a good God, a God that loved me and wanted the best for me, but in return, that he would be fully responsible for my life. And I told him 
if I become somebody, then it will be for your glory. And if I become a nobody, then it's your loss. And that day I became 100% daughter of God. And from that identity, my brothers and I made decisions to just stick with God. We made tough decisions to just stay together and say, God is the one who sustained us before, and he's going to be the one who's going to take us forward. This doesn't mean that everything was easy afterwards, but it meant that God was right there with us. And we had joy, we had peace, we had such contentment with the little that we had. And God was faithful. He didn't leave us alone either. He gave us an amazing church that became our family, where we were mentored, where they walked with us. You know, that's where we serve now, and we grew up there. And as the daughter of God, I see that it's fit that I grew up in the church, of course. And that is the place where we now serve and overflow and reach out to other young people, sharing the, the truth that we have found. So today, if someone asks me, what's your story? I know what to answer. Jesus is my story. What he did on the cross over 2,000 years ago is my story. That is what defines me. If you ask me, who are you? I'm going to say I'm the daughter of the Most High God. Dear Mimi, today is your wedding day. How the days fly! I still remember the day I held you for the first time. Your button nose, your deep black eyes, that grip. I wanted you to hold on forever. This is Zoe Breakfast Show and what a show we are having today.
is Omar Rush Livareliano and I work as chapter director ng Rasho Christi and Reasonable Faith. What I do is to help Christians know what they believe and why they believe it para maging ready sila to make a defense to anyone who asks them for the hope that they have. I would say na I really had a hard childhood. I experienced uh, physical, emotional, psychological abuse. Tapos sa family background kasi namin, we were nominal Christians. Ibig sabihin, we just profess Christ pero we don't really know Him. For example, we go to church pag Sunday, tapos pag uwi, parang hindi naman Christian kung paano kami mag-interact with one another. So yun yung environment kung saan ako lumaki. And I think nag-contribute to in siya why I became an atheist. We were just almost about to start and uh, we had a technical hitch but it's already solved and we want to welcome you back to Zoe Breakfast Show. This conversation is live on Facebook Zoe TV, on YouTube Zoe TV. Our numbers are on your screen. Talk to us while we continue with this live conversation on 0700075245. And we indeed even before I introduced you to our guests, I want to remind you our question of the day. Our question of the day right there on the screen, a very simple question. We are asking, who was the president of Rwanda and what is his capital city? Talk to us this morning. Who, was, who is the president of Rwanda? Indeed, what is its capital city? We'll be so glad to hear you and read your feedback. Tell us your name and let us know where you are watching us from. It will be such a joy to read your feedback as we continue with this live conversation. We also want to remind you that right now we are about to enter into our live conversation. And indeed, right there on your screen, you can see our guest. Indeed, Mr. James Kihara, business adversary consultant 
and a financial literacy expert is right here seated together with me and we are talking about personal finance management part two we did a part one i'm very happy to be here today mm -hmm. and um thank you for inviting me yeah um i feel honored mm -hmm. to come and continue with this discussion yes on uh, personal finance management yeah so thank you, thank you. Karibu san I want you to greet our viewers right there on the screen and introduce mm -hmm. yourself and you know who okay. you are and what you do. <laughs> sawa sawa. Uh, mpenzi mtazamaji. Uh, my name is James Kehara. James Kehara as you have heard I am uh, oh, I am a father of two. Um, uh, as you have heard I do what we call financial literacy and uh, also what we call business advisory. Uh, we, are, we are consultants uh, right here in Nairobi, having been in the financial sector for very long time and uh, grown through the, the, the hurdles, the practical part of it. So if you're there, you want uh, to hear more about business, how you can grow and improve your business or start and improve your business. If you are an entrepreneur, you are wondering why my business keeps failing Niko ninafanyanga biashara sijui pesa zangu zinaenda wapi the things we call costing you know the things we call uh, pricing how you just manage your employees at work and even how you manage your cash flows all these things including some basic marketing sales we can do that for you and also now after you've made your money where do you take your money that is also where we also help you managing the finances and basically that is what we do as consultants and i am very very happy to be here today god bless you yes indeed as you have seen and you have heard that is mr james kihara and we are so glad last time we had a great conversation we look forward to mm -hmm. a great one today we started yeah. talking about personal finance management yes. we want to do a recap maybe for somebody that was not there last last time when we did this program okay. we want to do a recap and begin by asking ourselves what is personal finance management and where does one begin okay um personal finance management as i said last time uh, is um oh, it's a broad topic uh, this broad topic is where we are discussing about um uh, uh, bro uh, broadly in such a way that uh, we are talking about how you generate your finances and we're also talking about after generating your finances how where how do you manage these finances and basically we are talking about uh, we, we we can say it is the ability uh, ability for you to 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 to, to, to uh, having the knowledge and skills uh, to make what we call uh, and confidence to make sound financial decisions yes. and in this case we're also saying we, we we break it into four parts where we talk about there is no way you can manage your money without budgeting for it when you budget you will save your money yes. and i said budgeting is where you're telling your money where to go instead of wondering where your money went uh, then also you you do what we call saving saving is where we are saying it is the first aspect of budgeting before you even go to your expenses then you need to consider how much money am i going to save and we said at least a portion of that money like at least 10 percent if you can 20 yes. percent save that money put that money aside and also said that you just don't put that money aside you you must have some goals where you where you want that money to go because savings as i said is also what we call it's a passive investment it's money that is it's like when we, are, we used to talk about uh, kinetic energy potential energy you remember physics yes, yes kinetic energy is energy in motion potential energy is stored energy ready to move so the same way savings are just like that then when you turn now these savings into uh, when they start generating new money is we call it investment that's how we're saying active savings where your money now has gone somewhere where it is generating you something so basically there's also what we call about uh, we call investment and investment is when you put your money somewhere that doesn't require you to keep following it up where now money works for you uh, th that goes investment goes beyond what we call uh, self-employment yes. because self-employment is the basic part of of course investment eh? but it is ile the lower level where we say like now the lowest level we say of of, of knowledge is assumption 
now here the lowest level of investment is self is what we call when you want to make now investment is what we call self employment yes. biashara ikigonjeka unagonjeka ikienda ukienda matanga biashara inaenda matanga the lowest level but you need to come to a level where you become now an investor where you put your money into some business the money now the, the business generates you money that's another level of financial management then the final part is where we call debt management debt management is where you, you are borrowing with a conscious you know where you are borrowing the amount you are borrowing and also you know how to manage the debts you have yes. so if you do that then it is a comprehensive uh, f personal finance management package yes. so and i remember last time we talked about uh, budgeting basically a budget as i said should have an income side where all your income streams then the first part of your ex uh, the second part after income is you list savings you must save before spending yeah. save before you spend you then after that when you start listing expenses start with your debts pay them first it's not your money then the second part is said is where you can either if you don't have a business you take off household expenses you, 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 your rent you, your school fees your food then you go now to business expenses if you have them uh, the utilities in your business and then after that now you go to what we call optional spending optional spending is where december nataka kwenda mombasa yeah. is it it's not a must but it is optional spending and you see today when you are talking about savings we will look at uh, where does it come in and then again finally is where now there is also waste yes. in your budget and then there is the balance that remains usually often than not the balance will always not be there yeah. in fact your expenses will always be more so here is where now we say prioritize your spending anza kuslash hiyo kitu mpaka wakati spend less than until you spend less than you earn yes. so basically there are some of the things we spoke last week and i'm excited to be here yes. to proceed further mm -hmm. and look at something else and basically now in brief now at savings yes yes yeah saving is very critical in fact uh, you know i'm reminded when president william ruto mm -hmm. came into power mm -hmm. he said that our, our nation and our country we don't have a culture of saving yes because we are a consuming people mm -hmm. whatever comes we consume uh -huh. we are not a production people mm -hmm. we are a people we are a consuming generation let's begin right there mm -hmm. because that is where we are mm -hmm. whatever we get mm -hmm. james kihara mm -hmm. we always consume <laughs> kabisa kabisa uh -huh. that is very true yes. and as i said last time mm -hmm. some people we in january we may spend mpaka pesa ya march okay. and how they do this is through borrowing mm -hmm. because they are expecting money in february money in april so they are there now saying uh, let us um, the, 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 i know money is coming i'm expecting money mm -hmm. so they start borrowing borrowing and eating that money because we are consuming nation yes. people don't save but you know what the, the, the reason why they don't do that is because of some few factors that i will tell you mm -hmm. uh, before i tell you why they don't save and why this country doesn't do that mm -hmm. uh, people always save should save eh? number one for an expected future you don't know what future holds tomorrow something may come up an emergency for that reason you need to have some money somewhere yeah. for you to to, to 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 use when such a time comes yeah. You know, uh, then there is expected future. For example, uh, you, I see you have young men here. Mm -hmm. They are looking forward one day if they are not married to get married. So that is not an expected future. It is expected. Mm -hmm. So someone here knows in the next two years, mean an hour. If you have your wife is uh, unajua ila kazi ulifanya na unajua baada ya miezi tisa there is something you expecting yes. that is not unexpected it is, it is expected so you save for such an event okay. then there is unexpected is the, the, those emergencies yeah. then there is what we call optional spending you remember i said there is an optional expend, mm -hmm. spending in your budget yes, yes. an ex optional spending is for example planning for holiday now right now i've seen people like uh, bonfire when i talk bonfire uh, bonfire and all that adventures, adventures. Mm -hmm. right now they are giving you saving options and they are telling you start saving now for december that's basically what you put in your budget mm -hmm. you want maybe to do something in the next two three years there is what we call also you want to grow your assets 
and also grow wealth. When you go to investment, I will tell you, uh, wealth uh, is different from uh, riches. Yes. And uh, wealth is what you take your total assets. Things just generate you income. You subtract from things that take away your money. Liabilities. Liabilities. Mm -hmm. Now, when you do that, now you get what we call your net worth. Mm -hmm. Some people, their net worth is negative. Because they are borrowed, 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 borrowed. So today, uh, and that's the reason why now here I am here today to tell people, th there is only two things that will save you in the future. Okay. Number one is savings. Number two is investments. Okay. Sometimes for you to make investments, they come from savings. Mm -hmm. That is why I want to say, tell you today, the reason why people don't have, a, why don't save in Kenya, number one and the basic thing is they don't have what you call savings goals. Okay. Why are you saving? Mm -hmm. Why do you want us to save? Because I will tell you, uh, if you take money and you put in your pocket, at sasa kwa wallet yako kona dhao, and you tell me you ni saving, na unajua iyo pesa lunch utatua miambili. Yeah. That is not saving. Saving must have what we call, um, must have what we call a goal. For example, in six months, I want to buy a meko. Okay. Mimi ni kijana ni metoko kwa mzazi na ingia kwangu. Sina elf sita ya meko. So I need to start putting money aside eh, for, for a meko. And I will tell you when it comes to uh, a savings goal, we will get there. Mm -hmm. It has three parts and I will tell you that. Okay. But basically lack of a savings goal is one of the reasons why people don't save. Mm -hmm. Number one. Number two, uh, you don't have a budget. Okay. You are not controlling how your money is flowing, coming in and going. Mm -hmm. That is another reason why people don't save. Number three, lack of an emergency fund, uh, or even what you call sometimes right now medical covers, eh? yes, yes. or welfare. Mm -hmm. You know, savings is in many forms. If you don't have a medical fund, uh, and you have been putting your money aside, tomorrow you will take your money and eat it, mm -hmm. and, and you put it. Uh, others, uh, one, and one of the most serious ones is uh, live, uh, people living beyond your means. Okay. Where you, you want to, like I said last time, you want to live in a house where that house uh, has a, what we call, a, that house is more than you can afford. Okay. I'm earning 10,000. Mm -hmm. Like w when I got married, I was earning like 18K. Okay. And I, I had to live at 3,000 hundred room mm -hmm. to go to a room that was costing me around six thousand five hundred so a third of my money has gone to savings mm -hmm. uh, to, 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 rent. to rent I even told you of a guy mm -hmm. who we were being paid when we started this work 12k he was paying rent 10k wow. so, so sometimes it's living beyond your means mm -hmm. and sometimes over indebtedness okay. having a lot of debts mm -hmm. having a lot of Debts. And if apa kwa ata living beyond your means, you find people ile nguo ameva, kutoka kwa kiatu, uangalie long, uangalie t-shirt, uyo mtu ameva kama elf tano, ama half of their salary, ati kwa sababu, anataka ku impress. Living beyond your means, sometimes it's not necessary. Yeah. The, the, then, then there is what we call overdebtedness, taking a lot of debts. So you are always firefighting. Mm -hmm. pesa ikingeni kuzima ile, kuzima ile. Na unajua na zima iyo na unakopo unaweka pale. That way also makes people not to save. But another funny one is what we call, people have what we call negative perceptions okay. about and attitudes mm -hmm. about saving. People think like, I am very little to start saving. Why should I save? Na ipe senye ni napatanga ni kidogo sana. Ata haifaiku. Ata haito? Haitoshi. Some people think eh, saving is for the rich. Mm. Sasa sa, sa, wale matajiri ndi wanafaa kuweka pe. But I told you, if you take your 20, uh, 100 bob, mm -hmm. toa kumi uondoe uweke kando. Ubaki na 90, tumia 90. If you start, na tunasema hata biblia there is a place it says eh, if you are not responsible, usipu wajibika na hile kidogo mungu wa mekupea. Hata hile atafanya nini? Some people was given hile talanta tano, mwingine mbili na moja. Wakumi ya rirudisha kumi. Tano ya rirudisha kumi, wambili ya rirudisha nene. Wamoja ya rirudisha moja na hadithi mure. Akisemaga wewe unapanda mahali uja, unafuna mahali uja panda, na unakusanya mahali uja tawana mimi. Hata haliulizo siungepiraka kwa bank. Hata ipate interest. Hata... Yes, you are your interest. That was a, a oh, parable. Was so a parable. he says you could have taken it to a bank to earn something. 
meaning e, e, na hata akanyanganywa kapati ile ilikuwa na ku the same way if you are ukiajibika if you are responsible with small more will be added the same way we talk about wanasema ati mimi si tajiri oh sijui then some people believe it's not possible how can we you know sometimes it, it looks like like it is totally totally impossible because mm -hmm. when you look at the finances you have mm -hmm. they are not enough Mm -hmm. yeah it, it uh, always goes towards consumption so how do i save the question <laughs> then is and and this is the question i was asking yesterday yeah. how much is too much to start saving okay you will never draw that line mm -hmm. unless and the day you wait for your expenses to be less okay. than your income ni ile siku ambayo hutakuwa na matumizi dunia hii ni ile siku utakuwa umefanya wa nini ile watu wanasema uito kuweka ni ile utakuwa umeso if you wait then you wait until that time okay. but now i am saying though saying it's not impossible i'm saying this you have 200 ondo mm -hmm. 20 start working with 180 mm -hmm. this is 180 forget this one label it if you can't put it in a chama that you will not go for it until then mm -hmm. i will show you how how you do that put those things we will call them there where you save we call them contractual accounts okay. uh, uh, where we agree keep this if i come for it i lose something interest okay. uh, because the biggest problem is discipline mm -hmm. some people actually they don't have even accounts or places to save mm -hmm. so how then will they tell us that sasa hata wanataka ku save then as i said savings culture is a problem mm -hmm. so for me those are some of the small things that people have eh, and they think it is not possible mm -hmm. that me i have come here to say today i i was in that class and the same way my friend if you cannot save wakati unapata 1500 mm -hmm. i'm telling you ukipata milioni moja hauta save because it is a discipline oh it's a culture it is a culture mm. do you know even these classes when you call me i come and train you these things ati wanaenda kwa institution anasema tupatie certificate tumesoma mm. i don't give you certificates the certificate will be given after the behavior change so so nilikuta hamweki lakini sasa when i come back after six months one year i see you are you, you are saving then i will say then these people have started doing what is necessary so then we can give you certificates it is a behavior change thing and uh, uh, these are things that and i told you the other day yes. the problem is not that people don't know they know even where to save but they even have those accounts na shida ni wanaitwa mid class this is where we are the middle class will always want to move with debt 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 eating 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 na hizi debt unakuta ni consumption mm -hmm. most of them yes. so eventually these are people who eventually you find that uh, wanaendelea tu kukopa watoto ndio wanaishi maisha ya pale juu nilikwambia not because they cannot man, man it's because they know but they don't do it is because of something we call discipline mm -hmm. and lifestyle and you want to impress some people sana sana pia wa mama wale tumeoa nilikwambia ndio wanasukuma mtu sana mm -hmm. you are saving na akijua uko na pesa ana hiyo pesa anaitaka ana, anaanza ku nilikwambia napangea kwa mfuko yes. so those are some of the small things that we need to look at okay yes what a conversation we are having right now with James Kihara indeed a business consultant and a financial literacy expert and indeed we want to ask you and that's the question you want to ask us even as we are about to take a break do you have a saving account Do you have a saving culture so that you can be able to save for the sake of your family today and into the future there is a principle mr james kihara that i see you know we are told 50 30 and 20 mm -hmm. that 50% is based on your needs mm -hmm. you know you focus on your needs mm -hmm. then 30% on your wants mm -hmm. and then you save 20% mm -hmm. what do you think about that and you see you see i, I will say this mm. uh, that is true while that is true mm. Uh, there are many models okay and that is one of the models mm. that help people how to manage their finances okay. but me i will tell you uh, even if you don't do 20 eh? mm -hmm. why don't you do what we call 10 10 okay because mama mboga mm. and you see these women they are every day they are out there yeah. unaona kawangware mm -hmm. hapo hapo kwa hiyo outside cooperative bank yes There is even this place kuna hotel ilikuanga pale kona I used to come here to give people loans you know how many years ago mm -hmm. uh, almost 15 years ago 
I was an officer, a credit officer in a certain bank, microfinance. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, I used to give kuna shosho fulani nilipea loan kawangware. Mm -hmm. Do you know, anauza matunda? Matunda, hii ya uh, eh, Nahurubaro, hapo mm -hmm. ya cooperative bank. That lady would even pay loan ya 100k. Na hizo machungwa ziko kwa Hurubaro. Watoto waka wakasoma na wakaenda mahali walienda. But you know how she used to do it? It's every day in the evening. Nimepata miatano. Ninajua ninaondoa yangu ya biashara. E, kuna faida. Kwa faida yangu, nimetengeneza mia. Mm. Ii mia, ondoa kumi. There is a kapigi bank. Anaweka. Okay. Every other day. Every other day. Mm. Ka, uh, uyo mama akikuensha zile pesa alikuwa na wekanga na anakuja kukilia mkopo ama kulipa shule. You, you are happy about it. Mm. And I will tell you this. If you want to overcome these barriers to saving. Number one, ha have a budget. You remember we talked about yes. that? Mm. Then develop a budget and stick to it. Respect it. Discipline. I said self-discipline is important. Number two, get rid of this negative perception. It is impossible. We can't. It is for the rich. Mm. Get rid of those things and start with you. And how do you start? You know, uh, I was listening to a pastor who said, at a Bible in a sema, uh, don't just be hearers of the word. Do, do the doers as well. And he said month of February is the month of taking action. There are people who need today as we speak. Na kuna pesa utapata leo jioni. Take that money kama ni 150 anza kuondoa if you don't have an account go today and open an account in a sacco somewhere in a, in, a, in a place where you can put your money because uh, if you don't have discipline have a con, what you call accountable accountable partners generate more income like i told you have more income streams uh, then uh, as i say live within your means uh, start putting an emergency fund and this is for people who are employed. Yeah. Mama Mboga, ata sit, nita muanzia wewe anza kuweka kando. Kama una, we ni mtu wa boda, jionu napata elfu, jionu napata elfu moja, ama miya saba, ondoa 70 bob. Anza sasa, ata simu ime kutengenezea mahali na ita mshuari savings. Anza na hapo. Shida ni, it's not the saving. It is access. Access. If you're able to access that money easily, mm -hmm then you're not that is not saving okay wow. yes that is that is quite a point right there if you're able to access that money easily then it's not saving you need to save it in such a place that you don't access it easily we are talking to mr james kihara we are taking a short break and even as we take this short break talk to us sms's will also be receiving your calls yeah right now mr james kihara is here we'll be so glad to hear make a call on 0700075555 and talk to financial expert right here on zoe breakfast show don't touch that dial we'll be right back stay tuned
having a great conversation right now with the financial expert, then Mr. James Kihara, a business consultant expert in financial literacy. You want to sit under this man and get educated, get trained, and get more information on how you can be able to manage your own finances. This is a very important subject because it's, it, 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 it concerns you. It concerns your family, your business, your ministry, your church. And you want to be able to sit under the training of Mr. James Kihara for you to be able to get more and more in regard to the issues that we are talking about today. We are talking about savings. Yeah, last time we talked about budgeting. Today we are talking about savings. And later on we are going to be moving towards, you know, uh, investment. How do you invest? And right now we are on the subject of saving. I'm telling you it's a subject that you want to sit under and be continue listening. Indeed, Logzanwa Max, we appreciate you. You're saying, James Karibu Shana, it's good to have you this morning. And they're saying, wow, great insights on personal finance management. That is from Logzanwa Max. Thank you so much, Richard Stanley M. It's so good to have you this morning on Zoe Breakfast Show. We appreciate you, Richard Stanley. And thank you for keeping it right here on Zoe TV. And even as we continue with our discussion this morning, we want to appreciate James from Kenya. Thank you for connecting and being part and parcel of Zoe Breakfast Show today. It is a beautiful Tuesday and every Tuesday we talk business. Every Tuesday we talk leadership. And this morning we are talking with Mr. James Kihara himself. Even as you continue, call us. We want to receive your call on 0700 let's, let's remind you our question of the day. Our question of the day, we are still asking this question. We were, This is a very simple question. I'm, I'm sure you know the president of East African community. Yeah? You know the president of Tanzania. You know the president of Uganda. You know the president of Kenya. But right now we want to take you all the way to Rwanda. What do you love about Rwanda? One of the things I've come to love about Rwanda is uh, a gospel musician that by the name, you know, Israel Mbonyi. And right there on your screen, we are asking a very simple question. And the question is this. We are asking this question, who is the president of Rwanda and what is its capital? Do you know the capital city of Rwanda? Yes, indeed. And who is the president of Rwanda? SMS us. What's up us on 0700 We'll be so glad to read your feedback. And also, let us your name. Sometimes you, you give us uh, uh, your answer and you don't tell us your name and where you are from. Please tell us where you're watching Zoe TV from. We'll be so glad to also uh, highlight your area this particular morning on Zoe Breakfast Show. Mr. James Kihar, I think we mm. can continue. Yes, yes. Yes. Uh, even as we continue with our, our topic this morning, because we are talking about building that saving culture that is supposed to become a discipline that we mm. begin to work on it right now. Mm -hmm. And you have told us we have to, you know, break all those excuses that we have, that it's impossible, mm -hmm. it can never happen. Mm -hmm. How possible is it? Uh, let me say that uh, there is someone who said the longest journey starts with one step mm -hmm. and uh, Rome was not built in a day. Yeah. So meaning that um, everything has a starting point. Mm -hmm. And uh, tunasamanga ispokuwa kuchimba shimo unanzaga juu kienda chini. Everything mm -hmm. else unanza pale chini ukifanya nini? Kienda juu. Ukienda juu. Mm -hmm. Somebody also said ukiona mzekobe kwa mti. Jua mtu alimuweka hapo. <laughs> si vile alipanda. So yeah. basically is eh, um, nini, eh, 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 sticking to the process. Mm -hmm. And I said the first thing now is to have a savings goal. Yeah. Uh, a savings goal is something that will help you mm -hmm. start the journey. Having a budget. Mm -hmm. And even if you don't do your budget today because you say, oh, mimi, yo maneno, mimi mze, nilizeeka, mimi ni mwamewasoko pale. Then what you can do, at every end of day, kuna vile tunasema mauzo, what you have sold, mm -hmm. minus, toa, matumizi, what is your expenses for the day. Yeah. The balance there, if it is positive, inaito profit. profit. The balance there, if it's negative, ni loss. Mm -hmm. Na kama ni loss, Ufu, either ufunge yu biashara juu yu si biashara biashara inataka faida mm. na kama hutafunga e, ubadilisha jina mm. useme ni shirika la msaraba mwekundu <laughs> mahali mimi hukuja kujitolea kila siku kusaidia watu <laughs> na kama si hivyo jihita yes. kamkuta uanze kujiuliza maswali kuhusu biashara yako that yeah. is a conversation for another day yeah. biashara iko na masikio inasikianga yes. ulisikia ati kuta za yeriko zilisikia sauti ya jehova zikabomo pia biashara iko na masikio na inasikia mm -hmm. na ukiifeed vile una feed ngombe ndio maziwa inaongeze ukiipatia vitamin uipatie chakula mzuri na afya itatoa maziwa mi 
ukinyima nyima nyima itakataa kutoa mazi the same way even a business but we don't have to get into that to go to that direction but i'm saying kila siku toanisha ile itakuwa pale imebaki ambayo ni faida ondoa at least 20 if you can 20 to 10 to 20% weka kando yeah. sema ni mia, nimepata 1000 ama 700 ondoa 70 ondoa 50 weka kando kesho kesho kutwa tunasema haba na haba inafanya nini yes and for a savings goal na e, tunasema savings goal is a table huwa tunatengeneza ambayo iko na several uh, I'll call them several nini whatever kuna savings goal inakuanga na goal yenye inakuanga kuna short term long term ambazo ni kama mwaka moja na kuna long uh, short term medium term na long term long term nataka kununua shamba in 10 years You don't start you don't stay 10 years unasema ndio hii nanunua shamba. If you don't plan to succeed, don't worry you have already planned to fail. Okay. That is a recipe. Mm. So tunasema short term nataka kununua simu mzuri miezi sita ijayo. Mm. So there has to be a goal, then there has to be amount needed. Nitahitaji pesa ngapi kwa hii kitu? Mm. Then nitahitaji lini? Then ukishajua ni lini ni miezi sita mwaka moja miaka tatu then unaanza kusema kila mwaka nitaweka ngapi if your goal is beyond a year mm. kila mwezi kila wiki na kila siku alafu pale mwisho unasema nitaweka wapi mm-hmm. you are convenient place for you to save yeah. na ni lazima ujue kwa nini nimechagua hii na sio hapa kwa nini ni sako kwa nini microfinance kwa nini ni bank na kwa nini ni kwa matin ya matres na mahali kukula kwa shamba kuchimba shimo ama wale wako na mangombe kule geshagi kuna watu wanaendaga wajua kule geshagi ngombe kuna kadram kana katago nusu kana wekerewa kakuweka maji mm-hmm. ya kunywa na chini yake kuna kuwa imekerewa kwa mawe wengine wanaendaga wanaweka hapo chi mm-hmm. kila mtu kuna mahali anaweka kwa sababu fulani okay. so basically for me i'm saying regardless of where you are saving kwanza kuwa na goal for example mimi nataka meko ju nimeoa ama nimetoka kwetu ninaenda nimekuwa nikipika na stove ama na makaa mm. meko ni elfu sita e, kwa hivyo goal meko duration six months pesa nitahitaji elfu sita then what do you do kwa hivyo kwa sababu haina ia then you go monthly mm-hmm. inamaanisha kila mwezi utaweka elfu mo? moja kama ni elfu moja kila mwezi then oh, oh, what about every week mwezi uko na wiki nne divide a thousand by four kwa hivyo kila wiki 250 hamsini then assume siku iko uh, wiki iko na siku sita hii 250 kila siku divide by six inakuta for, for 21 shillings ni for example mm. so every day if you put aside for one bob for one bob kwa wiki ni 250 ikifika mwezi ni elfu moja yeah. miezi sita meko you strike that out mm. kwa sababu ume hii savings goal kuna ya miezi sita kuna yako unataka boda boda baada ya miaka mbili umeweka pia hapo unafanya the same hesabu unataka gari baada ya miaka tano umeandika hapo mm-hmm. savings goal zinaweza kuwa goal kumi ama hata ishirini. Okay. ninataka kuoa baada ya miezi nne au um, miaka minne mm-hmm. pia nitahitaji elfu tatu unaanza pole po you realize wale wazungu unakuta wanakuja hapa kuona kuona ndovu na elephant Those people aliamka siku moja akaenda kwa banka wake kwa biash, investment bank akamwambia huyu mtoto nimezaa hapa miaka tano nataka aende Afrika Kenya amboseli akaone nyati akauliza nitahitaji pesa ngapi akafanywa hesabu akaambia milioni ngapi Tano lakini ni baada ya miaka tano akaambiwa akasema give me a plan akaanza kufanywa ka plan akaambiwa kila mwaka kila mwezi labda kila siku hata labda ni mia na hiyo mia ni kusema sasa nitatembeanga asubuhi kuliko kuchukua boda boda hiyo ni hamsini nimesave lunch nimekuwa nikikula kwa ofisi sasa nitakuwa na beba hiyo ni ingine so you find that it is from your basic things you are doing that will feed your plans zingine si lazima ati uende ukope loan ndugu yangu okay. they are just basic disciplines unakuta after 15 years mzungu anaingia kwa bank anaitisha ya pesa yake mm-hmm. anakuja Kenya hapa tunamnyenyekea na labda anaishi kibera yako wao okay. lakini sisi tuna, but it's because they plant we don't so i am saying please let us have a plan for whatever we want number two, live within your means 
wale ambao nilisema uh, spend less than you earn you remember yes, yes, yes. spend if i earn 10000 where do i want to spend 15 mm-hmm. I, to impress people then save before you spend unakumbuka hiyo nilisema mm-hmm. ondoa kwanza kabla utumi the other thing weka kitu kila siku kama we ni mfanyabiashara wa daily kama we si mfanyabiashara wa daily wewe ni wa wiki wa mwezi kulinga kama mafundi mnalipwa saturday shida ni moja ni one day kabla ni, niende shule university nilikuwa mtu wa mjengo wa mkono wow. my friend mm-hmm. we were being in those years tulikuwa tunalipwa 150 mm-hmm. kuchukua ma mawe mm-hmm. and this is also where uh, 150 fundi siku hizo alikuwa 400 500 ama 600 do you know and this is also something i want to tell young people mm. it's good if you don't qualify to go to university or college end up a technical institute mm-hmm. because in kenya there are factors of production yes. na there are four mm-hmm. tunasema land labor sk- uh, entrepreneurship na capital so uh, sk- labor it is divided into three kuna non skilled mm-hmm. uh, nini two non skilled semi skilled na skilled yes mtu wa mkono ukiwa na unskilled unalipwa hiyo 150 150 times 6 nilikuwa nalipo 900 mm. i was spending kutoka nyumbani kwenda hapo mahali kwa tunalala wiki mzima tu, ndio naenda nyumbani saturday tukilipwa mm-hmm. i was spending kukura tu 400 nimebakisha ngapi 500 kwa sababu ni kazi ya mjengo kwa hivyo ni kuinua mawe unakula sana mm. na kuna wamama hapo wanakuja na machapati na mauji unakuta ile pesa unakula na deni mm. kwanza hakuna kitu baya kama kukula <laughs> bila deni tunasemanga the environment will never give you feedback okay. feedback utaipata saturday mm. na utaipata na impact kwa mfuko yeah. unakuta 900 imebaki ngapi 500 500 kuna fare ya kwenda 150 na kurudi 150 mm. hiyo inakuja mia ngapi tatu Sio ni 1007. Sasa 500, 1400 na 1000 imebaki mia ngapi? Mm-hmm. Mzazi ni vizuri umpelekeka kitu nyumba. Do you know most time fare ya kurudi nilikuwa ninakopa. Lakini nimekuwa ka Mekua fundi ambaye ako hapa mak- makanga ule kitani boy driver wa basi hizi ziko hapa kikuyu na hata mtu wa boda boda. You get money every day lakini you are the worst spenders. Okay. Start saving. You don't have to get siezi kimbia kwa bank. Weka kwa simu tuma kwa bank usiende na wacha kuweka kwa simu yako utatoa kesho. Mm-hmm. Weka kwa account ambayo haina ATM. Yeah. Kama uko nayo usichanganye usi pesa. Mm-hmm. Separate your money and your business money as well. Separate pesa yako na ya biashara ama yako na ile yenye si yako. Mm-hmm. Yako ni salary. Kama wewe unapata pe- fungua account ya saving kuwa na account najua ni vizuri kuwa na account Uk- account squeeze ni free hata yes. equity mm-hmm. weka pesa kando na kando hii ni ya saving inaingia wapi mm. otherwise utakuwa unaweka kwa ile account yako ya kawaida unaweka unakula unaweka so hiyo sio se mm-hmm. kama huwezi ingia kwa chama usave kwa chama hmm? kama huwezi ingia kwa sako usave kama huwezi nunua mbuzi nunua assets okay. as low as mbuzi Mm. Mbuzi, niko na mbuzi ine pale niko na mbuzi tatu that those are some of the things you can do to 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 to, to stop spending and mm. i'll teach you a song yes for that matter okay tunasema hivi mm-hmm. utarudia nyuma yangu yeah. sema spend less than you and spend less than you and you say times two spend less than you and spend less, less than you and spend less than you and spend less than you and save before you spend save, save before, before you spend. spend save before you spend save, save before, before you spend. spend save little by little save little by little every day every day every week every week every month every month then you grow then you grow ah, twende times two times two <laughs> spend twende pamoja spend, spend less, less than you and spend, spend less, less than, than you and save before, before you spend save before you spend save little by little every day every week every month then you grow yes sasa umesikia hiyo maneno ndugu yangu what a choir eh sasa hiyo ndio sasa ukijifunza hiyo na uende ufunze watoto wako okay waanze kufanya hivyo sasa watafutia karimu 
kama huna pesa si said we are building discipline yes. kama huna pesa enda uchukue unachukua mbao enda utafuta mashiringi utapata mm-hmm. ya hizo mbao ama mia mm-hmm. kila siku ama kila wiki unawapatia at five bob wanaweka wanaweka sa ingine ukiwa huna enda vila wao kujua chukua hiyo karimu mm-hmm. towatoa zingine warafu unawapatia tena why it is not how much you are saving it is building the saving culture, culture. but the mm-hmm. issue is then what do you do with that money wakati umeweka mm-hmm. si waenda wakule chukua mtoto aenda kwa bank muende naye kwa counter aona mumesimama hapo mm-hmm. kuna account za junior zenye wewe ni guardian unaokuwa uh, signatory mm-hmm. akanyange aka kiti hata kama hafikii hapo aone zimefunguliwa account zimewekwa Arafu mkika aka after three six months mwambie sasa tunaenda kutoa ile pesa tufanye kitu aende mutoe akiwa hapo aone children learn through imitation and observation okay mm-hmm. with the time if they continue doing that and then keep them accountable hii pesa yako ni ya nini hii ni ya nini panga panga save to add something wapatie tu kazi hapo washa viombo nitakupea 50 fanya hivi that way you are building a culture i can get money and i can save it okay. kuliko kuwapatia tu hivi hivi mm. that way then you have your people learning uniuza tunaanza wapi yes. tunaanza hapo mm-hmm. sisi hatukufunzwa hapo sisi tunaanza sasa kufunza hapo mm-hmm. and let us keep growing yes. so basically then when you do that i remember i said sometimes when you are looking for a place to save tafuta mahali uh, uh, convenient mm-hmm. convenient ni unatumia nini Pesa, uh, you can even do it on phone these days yeah. number two, angalia security mm-hmm. mahali ambapo pesa zako ziko safe okay. number three, there is something we say access if money is for saving then don't get access mm-hmm. uh, there are things we call contractual accounts hii account ni ya miezi tatu, ni ya mwaka moja, ni ya miaka sita. Mm-hmm. miaka sita tu kila mwezi putting constant money alafu if i go for that money ninapoteza interest okay. ama saving ama ninakata kitu fulani mm. that with the inaitangwa deterrence okay. ile kuzuia ni bora kuliko ninakuzuia usikuja kufanya nini mm-hmm. na ukichukua kuna consequences mm-hmm. so that way you are able to to help people do that regularly so people increase your income streams mm-hmm. people look for ways of reducing your expenses or how to meet your budget at a lower expense and also examine uh, g- g- have those goals and look uh, so for me if you do all that you you, you are headed somewhere okay. and if you save your money now look for a way that money can produce for you mm-hmm. that is what we call investment 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 mm-hmm. yes yes wow i think we are heading in the right direction we started with budgeting we are now into saving we'll be moving forward towards investment and what a topic what a guest we are talking to this morning what are some of your questions indeed as we come back later we are taking a short break we want to read your feedbacks we want to read your questions mr james kihara is here we also want to receive your calls call us on 0700075555 mr kihara is just right here we'll be able to talk to you live on zoe breakfast show my name is michael chosen stay tuned to zoe breakfast show don't touch that dial you must stay together with us till the end
what a conversation we are having right now on Zoe Breakfast Show. Every Tuesday, it is all about youth in business and youth in leadership. And today, we are doing personal finance management part two. Let me tell you, we are going all the way. I don't know until what part what, <laughs> Mr. James Kihara. Because these conversations are quite enlightening when it comes to personal finance management. And this year, we don't want to make the blunders that we did last year. We want to budget well. We want to save. I'm so challenged when it comes to the aspect of saving. We want to see how we can invest and finally how we can be able to preserve everything that we, we have gotten through our labor. Welcome back, Mr. James Kehara. Mm -hmm. and, and right now, even as we continue with this conversation, let me appreciate Logzan Womak, you're saying spend less than you earn. Save before you spend. Save little by... Oh, this is the song. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the mm -hmm. song that you, you've just... You've just uh, so, uh, um, uh, you know, I was singing. I don't know if I was singing so well, my dear viewers. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm a preacher, but today I, I had to learn. Yes, I had yes. to learn to sing. Uh -huh. You know, you, you have to learn this song. Spend less than you. And. And you earn. How does it go? Spend less than you and spend less than you and save before you spend. Save before you spend. Save little by little every day. Every week, every month, then you grow. Yes. Wow. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that is yeah. a song. I think it's something that we need to also teach our children. Um, uh, you know, James Kehara has challenged us about, you know, even introducing the culture of saving to our children. Mm -hmm. And he's also saying, I relate to the firefighting. So, yeah? mm -hmm. She's saying that she mm -hmm. relates to firefighting, but now I will shift now that I have learned. Emily Wakasa, thank you so much for joining us right now on Zoe Breakfast Show. And Emily Wakasa is saying, good to see the mentor. <laughs> ah, yes, yes. And you need to, and yes. when you get time, invite her. Yes. She's very good in business management. Emily, we'll be having a, 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 a talk with you very soon. Thank you so much for yes. joining us yes. right now on Zoe Breakfast Show. I'm sure that, uh, you know, uh, eagles fly with eagles. We have an eagle here. Kabisa. So, Emily... We'll be having you very soon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let's let's keep at it. The saving yeah, culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think for me, uh, a parting shot for savings is mm -hmm. the time to save is now. Okay. You remember, even there is a place the Bible where it says that uh, during those days, mm -hmm. God overlooked, but now He commands that people to get saved. In the times of ignorance. Yes. He overlooked. Yes. Mm. In the time when you had not had James. Okay. You overlooked these things of savings. Mm. Now that you have had, my brothers and sisters, you have no excuse. Mm. Start somewhere. Okay. And I said the longest journey starts with one step. Mm. Start that one step. Mm -hmm. Even if it's making a plan. Mm -hmm. Even if it is just not a plan by setting aside some money. Even if it's going and opening an account. I know there are young men I, in my village mm -hmm. who I, I come from Nakuru. I helped mm -hmm. to form a group. And they started that saving. And within, uh, and in fact, I was in the banking sector, so I left the bank. Mm -hmm. They continued saving. Mm -hmm. When uh, now, three down, four years later, they were calling me. They had 500,000 they wanted to, say, to, to, to share. Yeah, they were doing 500 shillings a month. And these are border border guys. Mm -hmm. In Laikipia, when I worked there at some point, mm -hmm. I had some young men, and one of them was my cousin, to start saving. Okay. My friend, they even started a circle. The circle wow. is there to date. Mm -hmm. So the longest journey starts with one step. And to Nasema, the way, same we, the way we say our God is Alpha and Omer, the beginning and the end. Mm -hmm. he, he sees the end from the beginning. And if you see him starting, mm -hmm. he, those things are finished. Yeah. Start. 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 Mm -hmm. And for me, I will say, when you now save mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you live within your means, you take responsibility of your spending. Mm -hmm. Stop uh, blaming others. Uh, fix yourself. When you do that, then the next part is now you will use your savings mm -hmm. to invest. Okay. To do something with the money. Mm. I and saw uh, something you have just given to us about yes. the saving calls worksheet. Mm -hmm. Before we can get into the yeah, investment. Yeah, 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 yeah. We are about to get to the investment segment, mm. but mm. Uh, you can talk to us about the savings yeah, goals yeah, yeah, yeah. worksheet. Th th that is, uh, those who are watching, this is a savings goal worksheet. Mm. This is a savings plan. And this plan goes with anything you want to do with your money you are calling savings. Mm. Like I said, it has a, a savings goal, the amount needed, when you need that money, then the amount of savings required. So you will have it for a year, have a column, the same for column like that, amount of saving required per year, do it 
per, week, per month and another column a third one per week. In fact, some people, if your goal is not so big, you can even do it per day if you're earning money per day, like Kina Mama Mboga. Okay. They do it, they get money per day. Mm. So, yeah, week or monthly, weekly, daily. And then, where do you want to save? The method, the vehicle. Like I said, angalia kama your account na kupatia interest. Mm. Angalia kama ikona charges. Avoid the ones that have charges. Mm. Like I said, angalia iyo account kama ni a place where you, you are in safety. Uh, is it convenient? Ama utakuwa unavuka mabonde na milima ukienda kuweka shilingi miya moja. Mm. Na, na, na umeenda, umetumia miambili transport. You know, that's when you call convenience. Mm. Look for, then, then, so then we say there is short term. That is a goal that is wa less than one year. Hii ingine ni kama miaka mbili tatu. Beyond three years is what we call long term goals. Mm. Uh, okay, this one sh tells you short term and long term. Beyond a year, put it as a long term. Then we are saying short term. I told you an example. Meko is the goal. Mm -hmm. Then uh, amount needed 6,000. When is it needed? Six months. Mm -hmm. Then we are also saying amount needed per year ni X June miezi sita. Monthly is a thousand. Then you go dividing, dividing until per day. Yeah. You'll get for two shillings every day, two hundred fifty shillings every week, a thousand uh, shillings monthly. Mm. If it is a border border costing you two hundred a uh, hundred k, and you need it in two years, it is border border in the long term. Amount needed a hundred k. When needed, uh, one year is twenty four months. Mm -hmm. Then uh, every year it means in fifty k. Go dividing. You'll find that uh, you'll be requiring like a thousand every week. Mm. So basically do the math. Even if you want land 10 years to come or a car, uh, it end like it remka, then pale chini unaweka toto. Line is out. What will be happening after six months, you'll be striking that. Yelf moja kila mwezi unaacha kue. And for me, I will say this. Kama umeku kueka yelf moja kila mwezi. Wakati unamaliza hiyo goal inakuwa completed, sasa uko na meko yako. Instead of hiyo pesa itapotelea kwa expenses zako. Create another goal okay. that will even take the same amount. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, or shorten a, a goal that was to go for uh, beyond uh, another one year. Shorten needs na the amount, uh, depending, ongeza hiyo amount hapo. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, those are amounts zenye zinapotea. Na huji, una, unajuliza zirienda wapi. Yeah. Like I told you last time, ukisoma, mzazi alikuwa na somesha. My father, four children high school. Mm -hmm. Anasema, mukimaliza shule, nitakuwa na pesa. Tulimaliza, na pesa ikaisha. Okay. Hana hiyo pesa, ati mm -hmm. alikuwa nalipa 20 kia hiko wapi, hakuna. Because pesa, your ability stretches according to your responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Every time, unapumuzika a certain responsibility, then the, the ability goes to produce that much. Mm -hmm. So keep at it, keep at it, keep pressuring it. Yeah. You, you will keep up there. Yes. Now yes. that we have spoken about savings, we want to dive a little bit into the aspect of investment because mm -hmm. savings are supposed to lead us towards now investment mm -hmm. because we don't just save for nothing. Mm -hmm. We save so that we can be able to invest. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about investment. Investment in brief, I will say this. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I say investment is where... Uh, assets, uh, you invest in assets that require minimal or, or personal involvement or even no personal involvement. Okay. Umeketi hapa, unataka unanunua matatu, inabeba watu hapa. Mm -hmm. Umeka hapa, unanunua boda boda, unaletua miatano kila siku. Yeah. Uko hapa, the, 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 you want to invest in a business where someone else works for you. Mm -hmm. So this is where you get to a level where money works for you. There are levels of investment. Uh, and for me, I don't want to delve into that because the, the people who are employed, eh, mm -hmm. they are working uh, in the system. They are employed in the system. When you become self-employed, eh, uh, self-employed, eh, you are work. You are the system. Okay. Juu kigonjeka biashara imegonje. Piga picha mtu amefungua kliniki yake ya hospitali hapa kikuyu. Na niye peke yake anaifanya. Akigonjeka kliniki nafu. Nafungo. Akienda matanga kinini kinamfuata mata. Mm. So he is the system. Without him, biashara inafanya nini? Akikohoa, akiwa na homa, biashara iko na homa. Mm. Then there is what we call, eh, after that there is what we call business owners. Business owners, eh, 
they, they, they somehow own the system kwa sababu they have people working in the system okay. kuna watu wameajiri hao watu ndio wanakufanyia ka mm. beyond there then there is what we call investors money work for them robert kiyosaki anasema hawa watu uh, ndio sasa um, the highest level of investment eh, where you invest in big businesses mimi ninakuja kama for example allow me to say mm -hmm. eh, kwa hii tv yako Una ta, sasa labda unataka expa, pesa, pesa investment fulani. Mm -hmm. Mimi ninakuja na pesa yangu, naongeza hapa, muendere expansion, lakini mimi nakaanga pale na gojea pe? Na gojea pe. Uh, kufaida ukitengeneza hapa. Mm -hmm. So that is big investment. And I will say this, uh, people who are employed, they earn money, uh, they, they usually they earn, mm -hmm. pesa already inangia kwa expenses. Kulipa stima, maji, rent, nin, transport, inaye? People who want to grow, they will earn that money. Instead of it going to investment, they buy an asset. Okay. Mm -hmm. They delay paying expenses. In end of asset. Now that asset produces more money. Ina ingia pare juu ikiwa income ingine. So huyu mutu wako na income ya kwanza ni salary. Na wako na income nyingine ya hii asset. Kwa hivyo sasa ndo in, zinakuja zitoke ziende kwa, kwa expenses. Mm. That is... A, a serious part most people don't know. Okay. Oh, 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 delaying a gratification, delaying using to produce more. Mm. Ati kuliko nilipe rent, tarehe tano, ninamuambia we goja tarehe kumi. Hizi siku tano, iyo pesa inafanya ki? Inafanya kasi. Unanielewa? Mm -hmm. So basically investment is also turning in, in, in income to uh, turn uh, in that in, to add, earn more income. Earn more income. Mm -hmm. But for me, I'll say this. Uh, people will, uh, when you want to invest, what do you consider? Like mm -hmm. factors of investing. Yes. I'll briefly tell you, there are basically like uh, six factors. Mm -hmm. And for me, all eight. But I'll briefly say, have an investment goal. Okay. Why are you, do you want, wh where do you want to invest? Mm -hmm. Why do you want to invest? Mimi sitaki, si, nataka siku moja, ninunue kashamba. Ili mtoto wangu wako class 1, akifika university, niende ni use yako kashamba, nilipe shu? That is an investment goal. Yeah. Nataka ni invest, ndiyo ni, wa, ni punguze madeni. Nianze kukula pesa, kuliko kukula made, mm. sitaki kuishu kwa mshahara peke. Like those are goals. Yeah. Then ask yourself what is the goal. Number two, risk. How, how much risk appetite do you have? Okay. There are people who have, na same high risk, high return. But the greater it fail, the greater the, the mururumo. Mm -hmm. Unawonga chini vizu? <laughs> Lakini uki omoka, <laughs> unaomo? Unaomoka kabisa. Low risk, low income. Mm. Unanipata? Yes. How much appetite do you have? Returns. Tunasemanga rate of return on investment. Mm. How much money are you looking forward kupata uh, after doing this? Mm -hmm. Uh, nina M ngapi cost how much is the cost you will call it cost benefit analysis mm -hmm. there are people hey like people who go into production mm -hmm. I, I have a friend who wants to, who, who has a, a milk plant mm -hmm. um, who sells milk yes. he wants to go to production now he's a distributor anachukuanga from even several people anauza ana ako na soko sasa ameona wacha niende kwa I produce my own milk. Where that is good, the cost triples. Okay. Cost triples. triples. Mm. Now the question is, are you able to handle that cost? Mm. Or you will go more into debt? Or you will go to a level now you cannot even sustain the market? Then you decide, watch Anika. I worked for somebody some time back. Unona uh, watu wenye, they export uh, vegetables. Mm -hmm. Alikuwa na export vegetables. But it got to a place, eh, instead, eh, aka, na mashamba zake. Mm -hmm. Do you know, uh, over time, eh, kuna kununua kwa farmers, akipeleka, na kuna kuproduce kwa mashamba. Aliamua, it is too much work producing. It is too much work, labor, wizi, kupotea, uh, un unpredictable weather. Mm -hmm. Heli ni nunuange kwa watu. Ninauza, oh, wacha wanifanyi yo kazi ya kwanza ile quote and quote data work. It's not dirty, yes. but that work, mm -hmm. labor, mimi kazi yangu ninunue kwa, ata heli niongeze pesa ya kununua. Why? You do not want that headache. Mm -hmm. Kusumbua na tena, uh, let me not go much into it. Time. How much time do you want before you start earning back? Okay. It is very important. Mm -hmm. Because the, 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 kuna matuko unaweza chukua. Kwa mfano nimechukua loan. Ninunue plot. Nilipa na miaka tano. Na hii interest nitalipa, like it's a name, 
interest nitalipa itakuwa interest ya 1300 mm-hmm. ama 400 mm-hmm. swali ni hiyo shamba baada hiyo miaka tano nitaweza kuuza nipate hiyo how much time will it take before i recoup my even my interest okay. juu sasa itakuwa 1.3 kulingana na ile income nimepa mm-hmm. so basically time that it takes inflation i told you last time eh? Uh, I have a friend who does milk. Yes. Importing from Uganda. Ilikuwa inatoka maziwa dollar tuli exchange na 109 ikaenda uh, 120 today iko 150. Katikati ya hizo mbili. From 150 to 125 ni 25 shillings. Mm. Imepotelea si kwa mununuzi na si kwa muuzaji. Imeenda hiyo mm. ni inflation. Look at that as you determine even your prices okay. investment bucket mm. usibeba maya yote kwa kiondomo kiondomo uh, uh, diversify mm-hmm. then know how those who know how will always get a job because mm-hmm. they know how to do it okay. but those who know why they will always employ those who know how wow. so mm-hmm. uh, know, uh, know having an investment goal is knowing why mm-hmm. okay having a technical know how ili usiende tu do your research mm-hmm. know how to do it if you don't hire people who can do that for you mm-hmm. pay for that expense otherwise utangonga chini vibaya mm-hmm. na hakuna mtu atakurudia so wh- places you can invest there is what we call money market mm-hmm. if we had time i would tell you yes. money market is broad mm-hmm. kuna zizi nafanywa na watu wanaitwa kina britam nini unaambiwa weka uh, invest here for six every time weka kuna education policy wekaka elfu tatu kila mwezi mtoto akifika miaka kumi, utaanza kurikupu mlipie shule mm. call them education policies weka ipeze miasi sita hapa sisi tutaenda kuinvest in big places like government bonds wewe uwezi enda ku buy bond ya yes. government mm. this too much money billion yeah. kadhaa mm. but they are able to chukua yako na yangu na yangu na watu wengi tunaenda kununu wanakununulia there, there, there is a that there is debt market where you can start lending mm-hmm. property market you can buy property mm-hmm. there are young people who have ideas yes so, uh, idea market mm-hmm. it is working for us yeah. and there are many places i don't want to keep talking about yes. but basically those are some of the small tips for investment for investment yes wow we want to get to your questions right now because i can see we are ready with our dear expert segment and some of the questions are you have asked and uh, James Kihara is here to answer them let's begin with the first one right there indeed we are asking this morning our dear expert is mr james kihara dear expert at what level of risk should i invest my money should i invest all my money in one venture mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like that one i said one of the principles factors to consider i talked about eh, is uh, a no, not the principle of time we, I, i said investment bucket mm-hmm. my friend yeah. don't put all your eggs in one basket mm-hmm. diversify your investment mm-hmm. put here put there put there the other thing risk risk profile mm-hmm. profile yourself I'm telling you sometimes even now risk mm. goes with age. Okay. If you are past 40, if you are 40 and above like James, mm. stop joking around with investments that can burn you. Okay. You are now going to have to be very sure as you're investing. Mm. When you are 20 and 30 umeajiriwa, you can afford to joke around na unaweza potesa patapotea mm. na uinvest tena you reinvest yourself. But there are some levels you get you start taking care of even how you invest and where you risky investments okay. um, th- th- those are things uh, and for me risk profile y- y- you need to sit down with someone mm-hmm. akueleze na uuliza maswali ya risk taking yeah, because how far am I risking? yes mm-hmm. yes okay kama hujawahi kop alone mm-hmm. you you are a risk averse you don't n- like taking risks So kama huja unasemaga mimi ni kope ni choto we mm-hmm. ushaiona unaona kuchoto hata kabla uko mm-hmm. wewe you, uh, your risk level is very low yeah. go for safe things you do not like living on the edge mm-hmm. wewe ambao unaonaga timu yako ikicheza na timu nyingine mpira wakati wanataka kufungana timu yako inata, unaona unaanza kustuka mm-hmm. mpaka una change channel uchu, ukuje uone bada wewe upendi ku take risk adrenaline should wake up na wakati hata wanaenda kufungwa umeamka you know mm-hmm in a pump yes. but if you keep running away avoiding mm-hmm. then your risk is very low oh your Stop risk is joking. very low yes. wow that's quite yeah. a warning right there from our financial expert this morning yes. i don't know if you have one more question from our dear expert segment uh, 
uh, we can be able to address that even before we wind up. Dear expert, when should I consult a financial <laughs> advisor? And by the way, you are a financial advisor. Yes. Even as you answer that question, we want you to talk to us and looking at that camera, uh -huh. tell people how they can connect with you. My friend, mm. uh, let me tell you, the time for looking for a financial advisor is now. Because uh, 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 at whatever level you are now, because I know, kuna wenye hawa kutafuta kitambo na wanahitaji. So I will say the time is now. The time for a financial advisor is for you are a, the financial advisor for your children. Now who advised you first? Na hiya iso mangu shure. So you need someone. Number the other thing. So as early as now. Don't wait until you are in debt to go looking for someone to tell you consolidate this or do this, do that. Apana, start now. Wewe amba umemadiza high school na hata ujaingia campus you need to start saving you uh, to know how to manage money mm -hmm. wewe ambao umeingia kwa job market na hujapata pesa wewe ndio unahitaji hii masomo wewe ambao umepata kazi jana uh, this is your time wewe ambaye umechanganyikiwa sasa umepotea ulipotea you are firefighting uh, the time is now and I, my, you will be given my contacts uh, there i'm um, usually i stay around gong town but i'm around i go around this country doing this and talking to people both at a corporate level as a group as a chama or even as a women group as a table banking group or even as an individual we can discuss the rates and the terms kwanza ukiniambia uliniona kwa zoe tv labda ninaweza consider kwa sababu ya pastor chosen yes. kupunguza bei lakini sio free my friend hiyo usaha <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the things I will tell you and uh, seek these things now. Yes. And I will say this. Mm, uh, set your goals right for investment number 1. Number 2, know your risk profile. Number 3, do your homework well. Especially nyinyi mnanunua mashamba. Do your homework well, mm -hmm. research well. My friend Research doesn't mean you are the one to do research. You know someone who knows someone who knows someone. Let that research be done well. Get the right advice. Mm -hmm. Then spread your risk, yeah. as I said. Mm. So, and if you do that, I'm sure we have set you in a path for your future. Yes. yes. Daddy, uh, where, where can people connect with you on social media? Uh, James, your Facebook, mm. James Kehara, mm -hmm. The Uri. That is my Facebook page. Yes. Uh, X, ile ni ile ili ito Twitter kitambo. Mm -hmm. James at the mentor. Utanipata hapo. James Kehara the Uri is, the, is my Facebook, the normal Facebook. But there is a page called the mentor. And uh, I have converted it. Uh, I'm saying the mentor TV. Uh, mm -hmm. That is me. Although it's not a TV yet. Then uh, we are saying uh, that is my number 0720 -211 -502. 0720-211502. If you use any of those, you will get me. If you contact also uh, Pastor Chosen, you mm -hmm. can ask them. They can direct you to where I can be found. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll be glad to help. Can either be even be on WhatsApp okay. or even on an SMS. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I like WhatsApp conversation. You can ask, I answer. You ask, I answer. You ask, I answer. If you're able to take all those things, you put them in a page. Yeah, 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 in an Excel sheet mm -hmm. or in a, in a, in a word sheet, word, word eh? mm -hmm. uh, uh, your question and my answer, your question and my answer, they can form a very good flow of what you need to do. Yes. And the time to start is now. Mm -hmm. It is not tomorrow. As I said, if you don't plan to succeed, you have already planned to fail. Mm -hmm. Nothing happens here by just thinking about it. We must deliberately plan for what we want to see. What a parting shot right there from Mr. James Kihara, a business consultant, advisor, advisor and even a financial literacy uh, expert. And we are so, so glad. Thank you so much for joining us. Mm -hmm. Every time we call you, mm -hmm. it's such a joy to always have you on board. Yeah. And uh, we really appreciate you for taking your good time to come. Mm -hmm. we, we, we will dig deeper. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are on a journey. Yes, we, are, yes. we are on a journey together with Mr. James Kihara. And so... We'll be so glad to have you come again so we can continue digging deeper and deeper into these issues because this year we have to make better, better uh, financial, we have to become better financial managers of that mm -hmm. which God has given us, our families, our businesses, our churches, and everywhere that indeed money is involved. And therefore, we look forward to having you again and again.
Yes, we are coming to the end of that conversation. We want to remind you our question of the day. We were asking a very simple question. And the question that we are asking right there on your screen is that who is the president of Rwanda and what is its capital city? Mm -hmm. Mr. James Kihara, I know this is simple. The president is Kagame, uh -huh. Paul Kagame, and the uh, capital is Rwanda Kigari. I did a training there once. Oh, you did a training there? Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Director, what is the answer? The president of Rwanda is Paul Kagame, and his capital city is Kigali. Yes. You're correct. Thank you. Totally, totally right. We have come to the end of that conversation. Join us tomorrow morning for a live conversation like this one every day. Tomorrow it's Relationship Wednesday. You don't want to miss a relationship talk to happening tomorrow. Every time we come to the end, uh -huh. as our, we have always done, we always look at that camera and uh -huh. say goodbye to our viewers on Facebook, Zoe TV, on YouTube, Zoe TV. Thank you so much for connecting uh -huh. with me, Michael Chosen, on Facebook, Michael Chosen, or Pastor Chosen. And so together with Sir James Kihara, we are looking at that camera and we want to salute our viewers and say thank you for being part and parcel of Zoe Breakfast Show. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. Uh -huh. Yes, indeed, in one, two, three, action. Salute. Salute. God bless you.